Well, that might look like a pile of random parts, but I've got many hours invested in those 26 components to get them to all work together in this one little device. I think it's pretty cool. And I'd like to show you how I did it right now. Let's go. About 10 months ago, I started sketching ideas for some sort of a everyday carry chain sprocket fidget device, I guess you'd call it. So backtracking a little bit, I should let you know that what inspired this was that I did a project back in January of 2019 where I made some sprockets for a local robotics team. I'll put a link down in the description to that video if you'd like to go see it. Well, needless to say, I became fascinated with chains and sprockets. I wanted to learn as much as I could about their applications and the geometry that made them work. After completing several sketches and determining some parameters based on the size of the chain and the size of the sprockets, I decided that I could move on to some 3D printed prototypes. After three completely different iterations and a couple of months of work, I thought I had my final design. But there was one major flaw. It didn't spin. At that point, I kind of put the project on hold for about a month, as I tried to convince myself that it didn't need to spin. But everyone I showed it to said, why doesn't it spin? So I figured out how to make it spin. I moved the bearings from the sprockets to the chassis. This still wasn't my final design because there were problems left to solve and more prototyping left to do. And I also wanted to simplify the design quite a bit. So it was time to move from plastic into metal. Laser cut metal. That's when I discovered Send Cut Send. Taking my design from plastic into metal eliminated some problems, but introduced new ones. The chain was now binding because I didn't leave enough tolerance in the space between the teeth of the sprockets. I had also inadvertently crushed the ball bearings when I press fit them into the chassis, so they no longer were free spinning. After doing some hand fouling, I was able to free up the movement enough to get it to spin. You'll also notice another problem I had to solve here. The unit now, it's made out of stainless steel and it was too heavy to just hold by the screw head, so I had to develop some buttons for my fingers. It also had a chassis plate on each side, which added substantially to the weight. These buttons became a necessity, but because I was considering making a small production run of these fidget devices, the time it took to make them was a huge concern. Each one of these buttons was taking me between 15 and 20 minutes a piece to machine them. That would add over an hour of production time for each unit. Eventually my solution was to just order them along with the other parts from Send Cut Send. I would still have to machine them, but I came up with a great way to do it a lot faster. Another small change that had a huge effect was when I switched over from the regular bearings to the flanged bearings. That allowed me to eliminate having to press fit them into the chassis and also eliminated one of the chassis plates itself. So after all those ups and downs of the design and engineering process, this is the latest shipment from Sencut Send. It's got enough parts in it to make 20 fidget toys. So let's go!
So after I got that first set of prototypes finished, I gave away a few to friends and family as gifts. And uh, a few other people saw them. They said they were interested in, in them if I was gonna do a batch um, you know, and start producing them. They, they take a lot of time. I am doing them myself, uh, other than the laser cutting parts. Um, so, but I did find out that if I do them in, in batches, I can, I can kind of, um, there's some efficiencies there if I do a number of them, like maybe 10 or 20 at a time. So really small batches. So anyway, if you're interested, uh, go to my website, worksbysolo.com, sign up for the newsletter there. And uh, that's where I'll be posting things. I'll also be posting probably some stuff on my Patreon and uh, also maybe some more stuff on the YouTube channel here. So make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell button so you know when uh, the new videos come out and all that. And just keep in touch. I'm on Instagram. That's, that's a really good place to keep track of what I'm up to. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm glad you were interested in this and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.